Welcome back. I have now owned my 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 sedan for 23 months, which means next month I hit two full years and I'll talk about some perspective things then. For this month, I'm gonna talk about a return trip I had to my service department I hadn't planned on, but worked out really great. I'm gonna show you one more new of my digital lights that Mercedes has provided for me. And I'm gonna take you on a little drive to remind you what makes driving this car so much fun. But first, let's talk numbers. As of this morning, I have driven my car 21,490 miles. And to get that entire distance, I've only spent $771, which works out to roughly 27.87 miles per dollar I've spent. Conversely, if I've been using a gas car to drive the same distance in an equivalent S-Class, I would have spent $4,298, which is still roughly five miles per dollar. So I continue to demonstrate that electric cars are much more cost effective in ownership. And I've had a number of people comment on this. Why do I mention the savings in electricity over gas when the car is as expensive as this? Or I could get a cheaper car if I was really worried about saving money. And the fact is, I'm not stressing the fact that I'm saving money just to show you that I'm saving a little bit of money on a much more expensive car. What I'm trying to do is as many countries are moving towards electricity, I'm trying to give you one of the benefits of that movement. And that is the day-to-day -day running operations will be significantly less. So I don't share the dollar savings to say that I'm thrilled with the pennies I'm saving. I'm trying to give everyone who's listening a chance to get a little bit of insight into as we move forward and more hybrid cars and more electric cars become dominant and the market infrastructure starts catching up, you'll be saving money on a daily, if not daily, weekly, monthly basis by using electricity over using gas. And that's why I do this. So now let's get to our topics. We start by talking about my return trip to the service department. As you recall, I had my 20,000 mile checkup done just a month or so ago, and they did some great things, but my Apple CarPlay still wasn't working. And the things they did, one of the things they did not do was change out one of the internal air filters because they didn't have it in stock. So they called me and said, hey, we, need, we have the air filter now, let's bring your car in and get that taken care of. So I said, okay, when we do that, my software has been acting up a little bit. The three things that have been bothering me. One, the car plays not working on my phone. Two, occasionally the mirrors stop folding like they're supposed to. And three, my pre-entry climate control had shut itself down. It wasn't coming back on. And so I wanted them to take a look at that. And so... As they had been working on it, I came in and the guy said, you talked about three things and let me show you something. So for each of those three topics, he showed me a piece of paper that said there had been a software challenge identified and fixed and they were updating the car. So he took all three of my complaints, demonstrated to me that Mercedes was aware of it, had an update for it, and so he updated the car. And sure enough, since then, my mirrors haven't turned themselves off from folding in. My entry control has worked just like it's supposed to. But when I picked up the car, I had the mechanic sit with me because my car play still was not working wirelessly. And so I had a young man sit with me and we, for half an hour to 45 minutes, we fought with the car to synchronize my phone and to get it to work and everything looked like it was sinking just fine, but it never did. And so we had him try his phone and right away it worked and it wirelessly did the car play. And so he did some looking up and we discovered 
that I have an Apple iPhone 15. He has an iPhone 11. And he looked up through their little notes that iPhone 15s have been having a problem with wireless CarPlay with the latest software patch. So he's looking it up, seeing what he can do for it. But at least I understand now that it's a specific problem to my style of phone, the 15, as opposed to all Apple CarPlay's aren't working. And so while they're trying to figure that out, I'll use the cable. But I'm glad I at least have an idea of exactly what the problem is. So as I drive along, my car on the map is actually my car when I'm in a close quarters environment with multiple turns or when I'm stopping going slow. But once I start going faster, I turn to a red arrow. And it's not as much fun, but it makes more sense. I guess I couldn't scale the car at that scale. Again, on our gas powered cars, you hit the gas and it kind of winds its way in to pick up speed. With these electric cars, you hit the accelerator and you're moving at the speed with which you hit the accelerator. And that's what I like about it. One of the things I still enjoy playing with, oh, I accidentally hit my driver's seat massage and that's always a thrill to get my massage going on me. One of the things I enjoy playing with is the sounds and the sound experience. Currently have the Vivid Flux going. Now I've got it both on the inside and outside. I'm going to turn it off on the inside. You won't notice it much because it mostly comes on when you're accelerating quickly or decelerating or when you're driving slower. So I generally just leave it off. I'm on the freeway doing 62 in the freeway and the car is simply taking the turns for me. Every 45 seconds I have to touch the side of the steering wheel to remind it I'm still here. And it's watching my eyes through cameras right there to make sure I'm not not paying attention. But the car is driving for me. This is one of the favorite things I have about this car is on a normal operating basis, the car will do all the driving. And all I have to do is sit and enjoy. And I do really enjoy the arrows. They have saved me a couple times when I thought a turn was farther ahead. And all of a sudden, those arrows start popping up and turning. I go, oh, okay, the turn's a little sooner than I thought. And when the road's wider like this, I've got to do a little helping because the car is used to staying within a normal lane. So when the lanes are wider, the car does ask for some help. And the car just changed lanes for me. Thank you. One of the advantages this car has really provided me is this is my zen in between work and home. I've got a four-year-old at home, and so life's a little hectic there, and work is always going to be hectic, no matter where you work. And so having the luxury, the quietness, the calm drive, and the car that drives for me really is able to put me in a place of relaxation and comfort in that time in between. It wants me to take that turn onto All-American Freeway and I'm not going to do that. So as I approach the turn, the car is telling me to turn. I, I should be slowing down, so now it's my car. And it now realizes I didn't turn. So it says, okay. And we just keep moving forward. As you see here, it tells you when I should arrive, how far it is, and what my charge rate should be when I get where I'm going. So that's helpful. And that's what I love about this car. It gives me a chance to relax, reset, and just enjoy myself in extreme comfort, in a smooth, quiet ride, while I'm going from place to place. So for me, a car is not just a means of getting from point A to point B. For me, the car I drive sets the tone for how I will be when I get where I'm going. So I'm using my pedals intermittently between normal recuperation 
and strong recuperation to slowly get me where I'm going. But now that I'm getting close, I turn the cruise control back on and it will simply finish my stopping motion. So that's just a quick look at driving the car on a regular basis and why I love this so much. It's a sensation I've never had in another car. Even though I've had cars, my S-Class that was very comfortable, what this car will do for me far exceeds what any other car has done for me before. And I've really appreciated that. And that's, what, that's one of the main reasons I love this car. There's one more thing I've not covered. And that's this panel right here, right above the mirror. Yeah, the SOS button, I'll call for help. If there's an accident, you can call Mercedes me. You can turn on the dome lights throughout the car. You can turn on the back lights. And this button right here, if you turn it off, that means when the doors open and close, the lights do not come on. You turn it back off the way it's supposed to be. You open the doors, the lights come on and come off. I had forgotten about that button and my grandson had pushed it and I had spent a couple days trying to figure out why my lights weren't coming on when I opened the door. I remember that's where that button was. I thought I would share it with you today. And that's it. Another month has come and gone. Next month we hit 24 months. I'll give you the highlights of the last two years and I'll give you a thought on where I think this is going as we move down the future. So until then, you make it a great day.